had an amazing dream last night. It involved being lucky. It involved explosions. And it involved time. Put those three things together, my friend, and you get lucky time explosion. Wow. Oh, oh, I really stretched that one out. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a real a real intense one. Good mm. morning, everybody. It is Monday, and we have a special guest here today. We have Ian Cinco, Yay. author and illustrator behind Neon Spring, the comic book. How are you doing? I'm um, great today. Did you have a good weekend? Yeah. Did you get into chill. anything crazy? Absolutely nothing crazy. Nice. That's a good weekend for yeah. me. You know, I'm getting older, so I'm just like, I sat at home and relaxed for two days. Yeah. I'm feeling normal again. <laughs> it's important. It is important. It is important. Even if it's just a few hours on a Sunday. It yeah, is indeed. Yeah. I uh, I lost my mind and jumped, kicked an office chair and sprained my toe. <laughs> uh, as you do. Typical. Yeah. Typical. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people who get angry out there that punch things and kick things. Afterwards, you realize you hurt yourself. And the older you get, the easier it is to hurt yourself. And next thing you know, you're just like, you're not being able to move anymore. <laughs> and that's it. So you don't, need to calm down and, and rein in that, you know, insane, rain in violent tendency. Give me my coffee! <laughs> <laughs> well, we have some art news. Uh, remember I was talking last week or a couple weeks ago about the Philadelphia, uh, School of Philadelphia art, art School out there. One of the oldest in the country. I think actually the oldest. Yeah, they're not doing school. so good, right? No, they weren't doing so good. They were shutting down and now they're being sued uh, about their closure. Oh, no. So their closure is, you know, not sitting well with people, so... So first people were angry at them and now they're closed and now they're being sued because they're not open. No, no. Yeah. First what? enrollments went down. Then they decided to close their doors because enrollments were down. And now they've got a lawsuit on their hands from the people who were accepted. Right. Or I assume a period that uh, was supposed to be open and now is no longer going to be. That stinks. But, you know. It's just like people aren't getting their tuition back and that's why they're suing. I mean, I would assume so. Yeah, I, I think so. Did you go to art school? I went, to, I went to Pratt Institute. Pratt, oh, that's 2000 a 2000 nice to 2004. Cool. Oh, nice. Did you like it? I loved it. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to. I don't like talking too much shit, especially not publicly. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of shit you could talk about. I think probably any art college institution <laughs> period, but especially yeah. art schools have a lot of comical nonsense going on behind the scenes. But I met a lot of my best friends there, yeah. and even the te even some of my teachers I, I keep in touch with. They're just kind of amazing people. That's really and cool. Yeah, there's there's so much you can get out of an experience like that. So I, I keep in touch with one of my art teachers named Katrina Wagner from back in California. She's like from New York, uh, really kind of out there, outspoken. She's always wearing like clothes that are twenty years too young for her. Uh, and we always go to the uh, the High Line and we walk around the High Line, looking at the sculptures and the artwork and reading the little plaques and either ripping them apart or saying we like them, go out and get a drink. It's nice. You know, it's nice to keep up with people who really influenced you. It makes me a little bit sad because most of the people that, you know, come on our show here, they, they did go to art school and I, I didn't. Yeah. I went to SUNY Plattsburgh for mass media and communications. That's an art. Yeah, right. I listen to radio and watch TV. Yeah, that's well. That was my actual upbringing in, in education since I was homeschooled. From the you fifth know, grade. I wanted to be an entertainer, but right. then you know, I had like this one teacher is like um, <clears throat> speaking for broadcasting. And I don't. I, I forgot. We had a real relationship, uh, me and the teacher. And one day, I think I, uh, I challenged him to an arm wrestling match, and I beat mm. him. And he was like really upset that I beat him in front of the class. That's funny. I can't believe he even took me on. And then one day we're like in the hallway doing something where the class is up and about going to a studio and he goes, let's arm wrestle again. I was like, but we have to like, we need a table. He's like, no, we don't. <laughs> and like he grabbed my arm like midair and was like trying to hurt me. <laughs> he was like, Ugh! I'm like, this is so weird. Like, what the fuck? That's funny. That's funny. It was awesome. So you studied illustration at Pratt? I actually did. Yeah. yeah I, I really, it sounds silly, but I don't really like calling myself an illustrator. Yeah, I definitely prefer cartoonists, believe it or not. That's funny. But yeah, it was a, why is that? that was, do you think? Um, I I studied illustration in particular because I had a, a a man who was he was like an unofficial teacher, but he was kind of like my, all my friends in high school. He was like our mentor. Yeah, this guy named Jeff Fisher, and he he had a teacher that was a teacher at Pratt, and that's why I went. Uh huh. Damn, you didn't silence your phone. <laughs> and I and I went. I did. So I I went to Pratt specifically to to. Meet this other teacher who was a teacher of my teacher. Oh, oh shit. and uh, you know, like, the, the grandmaster seeking out the grandmaster. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, and, and wait, what was the question? <laughs> oh, like, why do you prefer um, being called oh, right, a cartoonist the, the over illustrator? Yeah, so 
So illustration was what that man taught. Yeah. So I went there to become an illustrator. And at that time, I thought, yeah, I love this. I love all everything about this. But as time went on and I got out of school, it was like, I don't really hear anyone even use that word. Mm. And I never really got into art to be an illustrator. Mm. I got in, I never even cared about calling myself an artist necessarily. I just, I love movies. I love comics. Yeah. I love music. I wanted to make things. So really when I think about like a word that describes me and what I do and what I want to do, it's cartooning. You know, mm. it's not, I don't, when I sit down and make this comic, yeah. I'm not like, let me illustrate my comic. I'm like, I'm making cartoons. That's the way I think about it. You what know? was some of the early visuals, like movie-wise or comic-wise, that really just set you off? You're like, oh my God, this someone is making this and this is blowing my mind and I want, I'm inspired. I know what I want to do. What was some of the first few? Yeah, there's, there's, so, there's so many, it's ridiculous. But I mean, if we're talking about like my comic, my comic is like, I'm not even like trying to hide it. Uh, mm -hmm. Akira. Yeah, oh, man. Akira, Akira is like when I it's I don't I don't even think that's like too overdone. I feel like Akira. I've heard a few people that don't like Akira over the years, and it's like I think they've only seen the movie. I feel like those the movie, are the same the movie, kind of. Sorry, well, no, I was gonna say, say those kind of the same kind of people who are just like the Beatles are terrible. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. Akira is like first haters. time. Yeah. So years and years ago, there was a place called uh, the Wizard, and the Wizard was in Nanuet in Rockland County. In Nanuet. In Nanuet, and um. You know the price guide, wizard price guide. This oh, is yeah, where yeah. this okay, it turned okay. into wizard comics and of comics mm -hmm. and cards. Mm -hmm. But they had a huge network of they were friends with everyone from uh, McFarland to Ron, like everybody. They knew everyone, and these people would just show up and sign comics all the time. And that was like what really got me into artwork and stuff like that. But um, I forgot where I was going with this too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they still the around? Do you think they're the wizard? You know what happened was before that there was a price guide called the the comic street guide. I don't know if you remember. It was just like this big book, and then wizard were like, "Well, we're going to do our own because we know all these people and we're legit and people will take us seriously." Right. So they kind of like started manipulating prices. You know, there there are a bunch of people who be like, you know, they just did that because of what they had in their shop to manipulate prices to make sales out of their shop. And this it was, was pretty 90s, crazy, but assuming, it was right? in the early nineties, but yeah. I got to meet like Todd McFarlane. That was absolutely insane. Was but awesome. going all the way back, uh, Kirby. Yeah. Kirby. Kirby is, no, is the you, man. Uh, yeah. If we're talking about influences, Kirby, McFarlane, all the image yeah. guys, all the image guys, they were game changers. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Big time. Yeah. We got an, uh, a comic artist and a collage artist who cuts up comic books. Oh, shit. Right. Oh yeah. I You're the destroyer the of worlds. worlds. All the comics are <laughs> water damaged or worthless. I swear. <laughs> and, but some people don't care about that. They're like, I yeah. don't care. You're still cutting up a comic. Like there are people who get very upset. And there was, um, I can imagine. I think it's, I think it's better to, to use it than not use it. Yeah. yeah, I'm supporting your, there you go. You. Say a comic book artist supporting a collage <laughs> artist who utilizes Comic books, I, that is huge. This is big. Yeah, I, mean, I it, appreciate do it, that. Do it thoughtfully. You know, don't, yeah, I'm don't recreating. Just... I'm recycling. <laughs> yeah, I used to be really fucking. I remember I cried one time when my little sister like damaged the corner of one of my comics. Mm. It's a really shameful memory. It's just pathetic. Actually, we're in the car. She damages the corner, and I just. Got do you remember angry. what comic like, it was? Fucked up my comic. I think it, I don't. I don't. Probably like an X Force comic. I might, I might remember actually, but I don't really remember. I'm not but that crazy. I think when it comes down to, for me, my favorite other than Kirby is uh, Simon Bisley. He's awesome. Oh man, Simon Bisley. Yeah, and that's like, comics are like primarily like line and coloring in the lines, but he's a real painter and his comics are pretty Oh yeah, badass. does a lot of the Do covers of uh, Heavy Metal. Yeah. Are you doing Which all? just went under, by the way. Oh. They're done. Heavy they're, Metal's over? They might come back. Just like an IP that like, hopefully someone will buy it and it'll come Somebody's back. Somebody's going to buy but, that IP oh, for man. sure. I'm yeah, guessing you've seen the movie. The original yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah, oh, my God. Great. I was young, and my dad showed me heavy metal. I was like, whoa, there's boobies and cursing and cartoons. What the fuck? That, my uh, dad's all stoned. From, uh, like, I, th I don't know the exact history, but it, Met Metal Herlant was the uh, French, the original French magazine that got mm. turned into heavy metal here in America. Badass. And uh, Mobius is like another giant, ginormous influence. And he, I think he started Metal Herlant in France back in oh, the day. Wow. But yeah, all, all that, like, yeah, that stuff is all great. Yeah, Mobius is crazy. Are you coloring and uh, inking? You're doing I, this all the way this, through this yourself, I did huh? Entirely by myself. That's I, why I hope to like get into more of a rhythm, a more like you know get the whole creative and the cash flow of cycling around, so I right. can hire some more people. But yeah, that's not really an option right now. Hey, it's you know, not realistic. that's what we're doing now too. You how, know, how I would long... love an editor. <laughs> yeah, we. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, I'm on board. Yeah, you should you should look for someone on Fiverr or something. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I've I've thought about it for a while, but I just decided the other night I was like, I need to do the thumbnails. Let me sit down and buckle through it, and I just yeah. blasted through them all in a night. Yeah, I just got to go. But you know, self publishing is uh is getting more and more easy to do too, and I'm sure yeah. like. Even coloring in your book, books have got to be a little bit easier these days with computers. Oh, for sure. I yeah. When I colored this one specifically, <clears throat> I, I definitely just dove in and was coloring. And I found myself like by page two, you can see this this double page spread right here. Yeah. I was I was like, I, just, I spent like days on it. Yeah. And then things were still off. And I was just like, this is, this is, this is not possible the way I'm doing it. How yeah. long so did I, it I take had, you? I had to learn the proper process of flatting the colors, which, mm. you know, I had, I had to literally just the push the or pump the brakes pull back and relearn how to or just not relearn just learn how yeah. to like how people color comics because there's a real process what program do you easier. use to to color photoshop yeah. photoshop straight I, up i i stick to photoshop for things i probably shouldn't i i photoshop indesign and back when i was doing video premiere I yeah. don't really venture out into other programs. You're a real Adobe person. Yeah, yeah I, I do the monthly nice. I'm the, the same way fee. though. And uh, I know several um commercial illustrators and stuff who do the same like they're doing stuff that you Probably should use Illustrator for, but they'll stick to Photoshop just because they're more comfortable with it. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, right? Like I get I get a little like anxious every time I have to open up Illustrator. I'm like, oh fuck, how many hours? <laughs> like, how does this work? I'm messing around in this program right now. I really only ever use it to like take a. I do logo design sometimes, and I'll use Illustrator to like take a very simple logo that I've got and just make it a vector. Right. So I'll like literally draw the the logo with a sharpie. Yeah. And then I'll scan it in and then turn it, vectorize it in Illustrator and clean up the little bits. And then I'll be like, there's your vector logo. That's you the way and you can't it. do that through Photoshop, though. You can't vectorize through Photoshop. There is, there no. is a way, but I don't, I don't think it turns out the same. Like, it's not mm. a, it's not a, yeah, I did it recently. But it I know wasn't. you can rasterize stuff. I don't yeah, know if they, it goes the other they, way. No, you're probably right. I'm not sure. Probably. I don't know. You're, you're probably in there a lot more than I am, actually. I'm just yeah. making YouTube. Photoshop is not meant for that. Why That's... don't you tell uh, listeners who might not have seen Neon Spring before, uh, can you summarize the plot a little bit? So the bigger story I'm not going to get into, but this yeah. issue is about a driverless car that lobotomizes people. <laughs> and there's Point a, uh, there's my, my character Zuzu. She's, uh, she's recruited to help bring in uh, a character named Donald into the car. And uh, the mission is a success. Ah. And, but, but Zuzu brings with her what she brings Neon Spring with her. Neon Spring is a corporation mm. in the comic. And you am just going to leave that. it at that. Okay, how how long does it, it. usually it. take for you to complete from start to finish one so, of your books? So this issue uh, took me a really long time, and I haven't I haven't made any new issues yet. I'm just writing, and I'm about to get into a rhythm where I'm trying to at least put out like three, if not six issues per year. That's my goal. That's a that's a pretty good. But that's that's uh, ambitious clip. for super indie. That is especially that is ambitious since you're doing it yourself. Yeah, but yeah. I I follow your work a lot. Uh, through Instagram, and I see you do live stuff and the videos, and um, I know some of them are sped up a little bit, but regardless of that, yeah. you're very quick. Yeah, you're really fast, uh, and that blows me away. Like I'm so impressed by like, and you have so many different ideas with stretching of the faces and ripping of the mind and all these things coming out of other things. And uh, I love you. I'm a huge fan. I, I think you, it's amazing. Like, thank you, man. Really, really cool stuff. So I also yeah. like watching your Instagram lives for like the when you're looking at other people's books too. That was fun. I stumbled into that the other day and I was like, this is nice. I enjoy yeah, this. I was I was going through my friend Morgan Heron's comic, which I just finished a pinup for this week. Nice. And uh, yeah, I want to do more of those. We were talking about. Uh, my old show that I'm not doing anymore. Everything in the kitchen sink is what it used to be called. <laughs> I, we'll see if I stick with the name. But everything I, in the kitchen sink or and, and the kitchen and, sink, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I'm I'm the sinko and oh, know, oh I didn't even about. make that connection. I'm <laughs> damn, dumb. that's good. Yeah, I don't Jeez, know. I'm I really dumb. wanted to do five on it, and yeah. there was there was a young uh, black girl who had a, a comic or a podcast already called Five uh, on yeah. it. I was like, let me not compete with her for that name. But I see she hasn't done anything with it, so maybe I'll jump back on that. You know. We'll yeah, see. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Got to grab it if it's not in use. Lucky yeah. Time Explosion has not been taken yet. <laughs> so we're lucky on that I one. I think that's a, that's like so original and unique. Yeah, and that's that's Morgan for you. Just squeeze them and unique things come out. That that name, <laughs> that name really, I feel like, I don't know if you guys have already talked about it, but it makes me want to see like, you're you're doing really you're doing great with everything you're doing. The whole, the whole show, all the oh, content cheers. you're putting out. Appreciate you. But it makes me feel like if you ever have the ability to, 
get some animation in there like, oh yeah like midnight we would love that. style or something like oh, that oh man you know? totally it would be well, dope. my big amazing i've been watching a lot of papa meat channel lately on uh youtube you guys know him no uh, really, well you showed you showed me him and yeah. um, i fell in love yeah very quickly i mean the guy <laughs> is uh when you see him you just want to like give him a hug yeah. You know? Oh, that's how I feel. But his, he's an illustrator <laughs> and an anim animator, and he that's his whole channel was originally doing like uh, parodies of celebrities, uh, and then like the most grotesque ways possible, um, like, almost very Akira ish, too. Right, like, like Warner Brothers stuff, yeah. but like he'll make the characters disgusting. Yeah. And yeah. Cr <laughs> like crusty, like, you know, in Ren and Stimpy when they get close shots. Yeah. Kind of like, kinda like that. Uh, oh, but going back to Akira, that's yeah. why I was talking about the wizard. Uh -huh. coming back because there was a guy that used to work there and he's like you want to see this amazing um epic animation to my dad and he brought home akira oh nice and then i watched akira and i couldn't believe what i had just saw it like i was blown yeah. Yeah, I just, the fuck away I feel like that's the like, normal reaction oh my Plus god we were in the 90s. such an epic adventure yeah, oh yeah man 90s. so yeah that that movie as far as animation goes it's still held no, oh, it's still, uh, it's still better is one than of the, greater... the majority of animation. I mean, I, I hate being like, what's better and all that, because we all love, we, yeah, we love Beavis and Butthead, and we love like Bakshi, how style. about Bakshi? You're, you're a Bakshi no. fan? Ralph Bakshi? I don't know. Oh, man. Rotoscoping. Have you ever heard of rotoscoping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He well, was what like, has he done? Maybe I know what he's done. Yeah, well, he, he did Lord of the Rings animated oh, yeah. movie in the yeah, 70s, yeah, yeah. which no, I, I, I think he ran out of money. He didn't even complete his, like yeah. a three-hour movie, but yeah. that, that version of uh, Lord of the Rings is pretty amazing yeah it's, it's weird beautiful looking animation um so yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's weird i like it because it just kind of shows you that as an artist if you're doing something new and innovative like you're gonna get right like it's i think i love about you too about you too ralph uh but yeah. i think that it's like kind of objectively bad in some places and but <laughs> what, because, the rotoscoping place? yeah just the whole effect and the whole like the layout and the look he was going for i and i think it's amazing and it's a technical achievement and it's definitely remembered in history, and I find them interesting, and I liked watching them. But you know, he was really doing. They were. It's kind of rough in parts. It's real like, rough looking. You know yeah. how it's made, basically. They yeah. they're literally painting on every cell. Every right. that that's insane. But that was like blowing people's mind back in the day because they never seen anything like that. Never seen no. animation so smooth looking yeah. because it was literally going frame for frame with a real shot. Yeah. And uh, then, of course, at the same time, he did Fritz the Cat, which is like completely oh, yeah. different than uh, I don't know if you've yeah. ever seen yeah. Fritz the Cat. Very dirty uh movie with cats and dogs and animals who live in the city <laughs> An animation is so funny to me because it's like i'm i'm like i've judged the shit out of some animations especially in the 90s i was like i'm a comic fan and i was really hard on animation who, who it, upset if it what styles <laughs> upset I, what, what got you mad i don't know if this is controversial but like i didn't really like the x-men animated show i'm sorry i was a huge x-men comic fan oh, yeah. and i found the the animation clunky and clumsy they were repeating they would reuse the same shot and i was like oh i saw oh, that shot wow. yeah, yeah. and like i don't know i was just really judgmental back then now i don't care so much and i have this new ad different attitude now what do you think about the batman animated series that was, i batman. mean that was awesome everybody like loved that. that one i loved gargoyles gargoyles was like oh, an yeah, animated gargoyles. show that i really loved but that um, was the same animation house right I think you're right because the yeah, characters Batman. look very similar. Gargoyles, yeah. Batman. I don't, I don't know if X Men was actually the same. You remember one, who did the voice of the Joker? Right? I don't think it was. Either. You remember who did the voice of the Joker? Who? Mark and Hamill. That's right, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what a, one of what his a best career, roles. Man. Yeah, what a, what a, what a he does a lot career. of uh, voiceovers for a lot of different things, but uh, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. That guy seems like he he's got a really like solid head on his shoulders, despite all the ridiculous fame and. and <laughs> wildness that probably has happened in his life you know yeah definitely <laughs> he seems a little fried from it but uh i agree you with so? you yeah a little bit he, but i i agree with what you're saying like he's he a was lot awesome of times in the muppet show he, he was, was awesome great on the muppet, muppet show. show and he was in the game wing commander yeah do you remember wing commander i'm old Man. it was like an old a flight simulator where you're like uh they made you know, a fighting commander, in space they made a wing commander movie with That's matthew right. lillard and he was great his character's name was maniac i remember seeing it in the in the <laughs> awesome. theaters as well oh wow you saw that i saw wing commander in the theaters <laughs> that's so awesome wing, that's maybe, really maybe i know wing commander I, my memory kind of spotty here and there yeah there's, there's, I sat in front I of my computer. there's a lot of shit that i just don't even know about <clears throat> yeah I, I i have this attitude though. i, I always want to sponge everything up like i'm not i'm not a purist when it comes to animation i don't have I have like maybe my own high standard when it comes to like what I'm trying to do. Yeah. But when I when it comes to like what I love and appreciate, it's fucking everything. And I don't know. I feel like there is a context where like if you're if you're trying to critique, what was the name of that animator who did the rotoscoping? 
Uh, if, Ralph Bakshi. Yeah, if Bakshi. You're, if you're looking at that Lord of the Rings and he's set up like, all right, this is what it looks like. And you see like these beautiful moments and then there's a spot where it falls off a little bit. Of course, that's like you kind of critique that moment. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I also like roughness. I find it really hard to 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 be critical these days. I don't. I just don't want to be. <laughs> but there's I, so I, many different styles, and people like things. You're like, you like that, I guess, and like they feel, see it in a I different feel like way. It's and... like you're hurting someone's feelings if you if you say like this is bullshit when they love it. You but know? I don't know. I think critique <laughs> has its place, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, I think it's kind of it's good to do. I think, and I like it, and I enjoy critiquing things and reading critiques of things. I think that if you hold it as an insult yeah. or saying that like, you know, it's makes you someone bad or, right. like, you know, I think that is a little bit much. And yeah. I think that critiques also deserve their own critiques. Like you can take a look at somebody's, For sure. you know, blowing apart an art show who just didn't understand it and then say, you know, well, you just didn't get it. Like this is actually what it is. And this is a bad critique because of this. Has right. there ever but been I a show critiquing the critiques? <laughs> Critting the crits? I mean, we're you getting there. You should make that a feature on the show. Yeah, that would be very it's interesting. interesting. Yeah, we should just, but there's not a Crit lot of critics in, uh, there's, you know, there, I think we have a shortage of critics, actually. I think there might be too many artists and not enough critics, because there's a <laughs> lot of people, if you're too worried about people's feelings, then, you know, it just, everything gets, no one gets told what's bad or not. Like, I want people to come roast us in the comments about why our podcast sucks, so I can make it better. Uh, yeah, you're but, inviting you know, it in. <laughs> yeah, I want to, I'm inviting it in now. Come, come tell me a complaint. Come, my audio shit. mixing sucks is my, do talk I say um shit. too much? I know that one's true. Anyway, that you talk too much? No, that I say um, and that sometimes say, I talk too um, much. You know, nah, you guys are killing the show. Man. Oh, I appreciate Yay! you saying that. Yeah. Uh, and you're killing some comic books. You have really lovely illustrations, and I love all the paintings you've done. I have one of yours hanging at oh, my yeah. home, yeah, uh, above my workstation. I look at it every day. It's the Alt Control Delete robot, Thank and you, so man. I take a look at that, and it helps me stay inspired to make more things. That was a that was a piece I painted with. Uh, Adrian Bermeo yep. and uh which is how we met. Yeah, we met through uh, Adrian. Yeah, Adrian's um, a real funny guy. I mean, technically, well, I, yeah, that's that's how we met, but I I did make my way into con artist on Bowery before it was Bowery Union that's right true. before it all ended. Oh yeah, before it imploded. But I never yeah, I never crossed paths with you there. I never Oh I missed, yeah, I think I, I, was, I was there. I was out already by that time. Yeah. Probably. But yeah, that was a great show. I love the work that you two were doing together. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of con artist, I, I used to do you know my other comic making friend Ian? I met Ian Bertram. Yeah. Uh, Nova Nova brought me to to con artist. Uh, mm. It was like, it was after one of my. I had a show in like December, I think twenty nineteen. Yeah. He was like, yo, I really want to introduce this artist, Ian Bertram. Do you know who he is? And at the moment, and you know, I'm kind of bad with names. I was like, no, I don't, I don't know. But as soon as I I saw his art, I was like, oh, I'm already following this guy. I know exactly yeah. who this is. And I I knew who he was, but to meet him that night, it was like, holy fuck, what a small world. What what is this guy? I never would have, I didn't know who he was. I thought he was like an older man because he was, his art was so like, <laughs> yeah, he had a huge following and his, his art was awesome. I figured he was older. I think he's one of the youngest people to ever draw Batman officially for DC. That's so badass. Uh, yeah. And you guys have some common. That work is so good. I feel like you guys have some visual things in common too, like your inspirations of Akira. Like, you know, his stuff is Akira, very Akira, Mobius. Yeah. You know, like he, he, talking about how long it takes to produce a comic, he yeah. spent maybe six years on little bird i watched him make wow. little bird over six years in that studio he and he told me he was never not working i should do yeah every time i was in there he was just he had a monster energy energy drink yeah. headphones on, <laughs> and i felt like i was really i, I had to talk to him but mm. i felt so bad because he was just like you could tell he was just like mm, okay i want to get back to work now mm -hmm. <laughs> i have to be honest with you ian yeah i stole one of your stickers from the streets oh That's awesome. and I guess see, which one it was i see them disappear every now and then and this I'm was like, one batman <laughs> oh, nice! The one it was like Lower East Side, one eighty-eight, somewhere Street. in the Lower East yeah, Side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you well, there's only one that I put out, so it had to be that that's one. That's fucked up, man. I gotta no, take a good. picture and send it to you because I'm I don't know if I ever have... told you. Um, I I collect stickers off the streets. I've been doing it since 2007. Awesome. So I have over 500 pages of original stickers. That's awesome, man. And I tag everyone. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was like, I gotta let them know. No, I took I'm, his I don't, get, I don't get. I learned not to get angry about that. Like when you're yeah. a, an artist of the streets, you can't get angry at anybody, especially not graffiti artists who tag over you. You're gonna go right over. And yeah. if people stickers are taking on your stickers. stickers, it's flattery, you know. And like honestly, that shit will get weathered away or, or covered up eventually right. anyway. Right. I mean, the first I'm time it happened it, to me, you know. a woman showed me like, I did this. I was like, oh, that's a little weird. And then I started, and then I had a bunch of other friends who were like shaming her for doing it. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. It's flattery. It's going to get destroyed anyway. Do you know an artist named Sarah Arenthal? Yeah. Yeah. She does like the, the mm -hmm. line drawings. Yeah. Like they're like the women, the faces. She is like kind of simple, like line drawing of a woman's face. She'll draw all of her stuff uh, in the street. And we were having a conversation about like, you know, where's the line 
Uh, cause she was get, she was get angry when people would take her art out of certain places, but then she would draw on like a TV that's being thrown away on the side of the street. So there, I, she was like trying, I was trying to figure out where her line was and it's her so line blurry. was basically, if you need a power drill to take it out, then she's mad. <laughs> <laughs> cause I, cause there was a video of somebody undrilling like, um, you know, an advertising, uh, stand, like a box for a poster. And they had to use a power drill to get her art out. And then she was like pissed about it. And she's like, <laughs> I put that up for people to see. And I was like, yeah, but you're putting stuff on the street. So how do you decide whether or not it's a good thing or a bad thing that someone's taking it? She's like, if it requires a drill, I'm mad. <laughs> and I'm like, Fair she, does, she does the line drawings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really nice. Like, you know, it's like similar. She, she does a lot of different kind of work, recycling other art as well, which I think is cool. Yeah. To like paint over other stuff. I went yeah. to an artist talk of hers downtown. Guys, I'm going to freak you out. Why? Some national holidays. Oh, it is time. I yeah, know we're, we're getting, getting down close to, to the end of the, uh, so we'll go minutes. through these quickly. Yeah. Well, it's National Iced Tea Day. Like the the wrapper or the drink? <laughs> that, I wasn't even thinking about that. should be the wrapper, but yeah. no, it's the drink. Oh, okay. Are you, you like sweet tea or unsweetened? No, I like the wrapper. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I like my tea. Um, Rat nice. It is also National Ballpoint Pen Day. You know, I saw that vintage banana. Is that, is that a banana critique pen? of ballpoint pen drawing? Yeah, fuck ballpoint pens. Like All my homies hate ballpoint pens. Do you Fountain guys have bed bugs? Huh? No, I do not have bed bugs. That's awesome because it's National Bed Bug Prevention Day. Well, Ooh, good. It right. says here all you have to do is just piss all over your mattress, and they'll never, they'll never like. I'm pretty sure that's what it says. That's yeah. weird. <laughs> okay, um, it's. <laughs> If your name is Colt, it's your day. It's also National Egg Roll Day, which I could slam a fucking egg roll right now. I, I do love egg rolls. Love egg rolls. National Herbs and Spices Day. Oh, boy. Is that like the KFC make that one? Quite possibly. You know, they have a stadium called Yum Stadium. No. That's, that's called nice. KFC Yum Stadium. <laughs> I think that's because the Yum Group is a uh, the corporate umbrella organization oh, really? for the fast food chain KFC and others called the mm. Yum Yum Corporation. That's such a speaking of innocuous <laughs> name for a corporation. I feel like that's good for like you know this dystopian yeah. uh, corpo world that's in a Neon Spring. I'm totally dragnetting and sponging you ever, everything. Up you right ever now. thought about making an edible comic? Mm. <laughs> you I read it and then you eat it. <laughs> now, now you've planted a seed. Planted a seed, my friend. Something to think about. Something to think about. Just like a giant fruit loop. You have to like <laughs> pull the pages if out. If you have me back, be interesting. Next time, oh yeah, we'll eat. We'll eat together. We'll, we'll have to think about this. We'll Edible have to work art. on this. Oh my yeah. god, I, I don't feel want like to that. Eat. Couldn't be too many pages. That would be like maybe a three, three page. Oh, what you would do is we would print on like. Um, Oh, actually, like now a that wrap. you mention it, yeah, there's like, like rice paper things, but then that you eat. Right, but yeah. then we can silk screen. I mean, this would be a huge deal. We would have to silk screen with like food, like ketchup. Edible and like links. for each color, like it would be like a food. Right. You know, and then you, you would have a reading party and everyone would read it and then feed each other. Be like, you want some of this page number three? You want to eat number four? Eat after reading. If you're feeding it, you to some, I don't oh know. man, <laughs> eat after reading. There I you think go. you're I coming think up you're with some good ideas. Into, uh, you're venturing into fetish territory with the feeding. And there's into nothing wrong person. with that. All right, and all you listeners who have a weird comic book eating fetish, uh, fetish follow Morgan. For all yes. of you who love some dystopian comic book, <laughs> check out Neon Spring and follow <laughs> Ian Sinkin. If you have a comic book of your own. Ian Cinco's Instagram is doing some lives, showing off some work. So hit him up, hit us up, uh, and we hope to see you on Wednesday. 